This is uh, Eagle Creek Springs. It's a tributary of the Saldic River. This is part of my family's ranch. We have this creek that flows into the river through our property and then the last 200 feet inside the Olympic National Forest. It's a spring-fed stream. Temperature was measured at 48 degrees Fahrenheit year-round, plus or minus one degree. It's actually an underground river that comes out here. I counted at least 21 places where see water pouring right out of the ground. In 1998, we had an agreement with the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition. They're primarily who we deal with. They contacted the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife and they came out and investigated this creek and turned it into a shear site, which stands for Sighted Salmon Habitat Enhancement and Restoration. They had a mandate going from the state legislators to try to save the um, coho salmon. So we became one of what was originally 58 shear sites out here along the coast. There's now just 54. Four of them got washed out on the Ho River. They picked out these spots. You have to have coho salmon in them originally. And then once they site that and they investigate the springs, they're all cold water refuge, which are absolutely critical habitat for coho salmon. They put in a uh, culvert with a built-in fish ladder. Only the third time in the state that they did that, probably the last, it was pretty expensive. What it did when they put it in and created sort of a beaver pond effect with the continuous flow of a open stream with a real good salmon habitat. So once the culvert was put in, they started out by putting in 35 yards of spawning gravel. We kept asking the Salmon Coalition for more gravel and now to the point where we've got over 140 cubic yards of state-approved spawning gravel in the creek, all of it put in by hand. Various amount of people doing the work from the OCC crew to uh, Boy Scout Troop 1539. Just a whole bunch of people helping. It's all a volunteer project. But there's 53 other sites that haven't had any funding. And they're all failing because those sites, they use cedar boards and cedar planks. And after 30, 40 years of that, they're wearing out. Some of these sites have actually disconnected the good water from the salmon. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do is raise the awareness for the uh, shear sites to get them fixed. There's 53 broken ones out there. And I gotta find a way of raising money. And we're using this shear site as awareness to what those other 53 could be like. What happened is in 2003, all 54 of these shear sites were abandoned by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, by the state legislators. They couldn't prove they were successful because the salmon population kept decreasing. So they changed direction and went to supporting hatcheries and ignoring the wild salmon population. So they abandoned us. So as volunteers, we just kept doing it, you know, just, just do it. If it works, do it again. We've got three things that we're enhancing here. First one is the spawning gravel. We put in 140 yards. That's actually 14 dump truck loads of gravel. That's a lot. We also are allowed to do woody debris. And what that does is it provides cover for the, for the little fry that hatch in the stream. We also, in the fall, get a bunch of surplus salmon carcasses from the Salduck Salmon Hatchery downstream about nine miles. Those carcasses are all checked by the biologists, trucked up here, and we take them and put them in by hand. And that's it. Nutrient enhancements, woody debris, clean and healthy salmon spawning gravel. It's working. That's all I can tell you is we, this year we've got over 30 
rats in an 800 foot long creek that's a pretty good stash of fish and they're all wild they're all coho wild fall run you know holy cow the rest of it's just a matter of survival and that's what we're trying to do here is increase their odds of survival while they're in the creek if we can impact it here then you know it's got to be a positive impact